Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today, uh, a short tutorial how to do the CAT 2 and CAT 3 uh, with Autoland 0.737. Uh, currently, I'm flying a Zebo 737800 uh, and I'm approaching Stansted Airport in uh, Great Britain. So, the basic question is when do we use the CAT 2 or CAT 3? So uh, uh, does it have to be an autoland always? So basically, yes, the cat two or cat three we do use whenever the weather is below the minima for cat one approach. So whenever it's below 200 feet ceiling or 550 meters IPR, we have to use the cat two or cat three. And basically. Uh, most operators will uh, use that uh, together with Autoland and I think even Cat 3 is mandatory I mean yeah Cat 3 is definitely mandatory to do the Autoland and it makes uh, life slots easier so it's reducing workload a lot uh, I will put holding at this point just to give us some minutes and holding at them yeah, 0, 05 for right turns. I go to the line just to be on track. 2 point. Right turns, that's executed. Yeah, the holding is here. Just we might need some more minutes. And yeah, whenever we have minimums below cat 1, so uh, we can expect cat 2 or cat 3. Uh, you can check the minimums in the intern as well, but cat 2 is 100 feet ceiling, 20 meters IVR. And cat 3 is below 50 and below 200 feet ceiling. So today I have cat 2 weather. We're gonna perform full Autoland runway 22 in uh, London Stansted. And I have approach plates from London Stansted as well. Uh, so you have to keep in mind that Autoland has a lot of limitations, basically, most of the systems on the 737 has to be operative of course including uh, both autopilots and so uh, actually both radio altimeters, both radios and even both windshield wipers so that's a lot of limitations and the system becomes inoperative we basically have to discontinue the approach and just go to the other airport to the better weather and the other limitation is the wind, we can have 25 uh, knot headwind, 20 crosswind or 10 tailwind for this kind of approach and there is no gust or wind to report that so this is pretty much quite sensitive uh, type of uh, autopilot so any gust to wind it might disconnect and you have to go around them. Uh, the other thing, you don't have to necessarily do the auto lens in CAT 2 or CAT 3, you can do it even when uh, you have cattle outside, so there's no clouds, no winds, no weather, or whatever you can do it for practice. So, uh, Boeing 737 is uh, basically certified to the to do the autoland on flaps 30 and flaps 40. But the biggest thing is that uh, whenever you're using flaps 30, uh, the pitch is higher. So basically, if you're doing cap two, cap three, we usually use flaps 40. So we have lower pitch and then uh, flaps 30 you will see the runway somewhere bottom here and flaps 40 is nicely nice and easy to see and I will show it during the approach as well. Uh, yeah so whatever let's start from that. Uh, at the beginning I will start from FFC. I would uh, I have a less cut two cut three in the area two two in London stance. I select that from the FMC. I go to departure arrival, arrival, and I have RS22 via Abbott, and yeah, basically I have them. I will do vectors later, but you can just follow the Abbott for uh, Since you have this in the FMC, we can go to the center pedestal, and we have to set the frequencies. For so both sides, we have to have the same ILS. Stansted, I have localizer of India Sphere X ray 105, so 1105, and it's active on NAV 1 
105, yeah, it's already been selected, so active on both sites. And we'll check if the FMC has 10 fly the yes, X ray, and the course will be 2 to 3. So the course is pick and bolt, fine approach course, 2 to 3, 2 to 3 here, and we go 2 to 3 on this side, 2 to 3 on this side, both has to be matching, and that's it. Of course, you can check in the FMC again, 2 to 3, so we have 3 times plus on the plate on the same. Next thing we do, we have to set the minimums. If we're using the minimums, you have minimums specified on every approach plate. If you go to the bottom, you can see CAT2 or CAT3 alpha minimums. In this case, we're going to use the CAT3 alpha ILS. We have the decision height of 50 feet and with RFER 200 meters. So the decision height means that we're going to use the radio altimeter for landing, not the bottom. So uh, you go to minimums, you set the large knob to radio, and it should be showing the radio in here in a second. You go to radio, and we set 50 feet radio, and it's going to 50 feet, and it's here to 50. Then we go to the FO side, and it should be matching as well, just to kind of, you know, keep it real. So we have 50. We have minimums of 50 and we have it both sides set. Once we set the minimums, uh, I will go back to computer and I go to runway 22. I set my fixes so I have any uh, reference during approach. The first fix, the latest, would be 5 miles. The different operators will set different things in here. Uh, so 5 miles, I have to go to down flaps 15 and flaps 1, I have to go by 10 miles but if I'm doing cap 2, cap 3, I will usually go with 12 or even 40 miles let's say yeah, I keep it 12 and I switch this to 6 so I can show you more things from the approach uh, once we do that one, we go to progress, we have 2.6, landing with 2.2, so we have 400 kilograms of fuel to go, we have 57.7, minus 400, we're gonna be 57.3, and the VREF, flaps 40.131, wind correction, plus 5, why you don't take flaps 40, and VREF, plus 5, and that's all set. So since we've done this one, we are pretty much ready with uh, all the approach things in here. So I go to fold, and I do exit hold, execute, and she should just go to add them, and then abort. Oh yeah, just go to add it. Doesn't make any sense in here. Yeah, she, she will be turning right to Abbott, and I do execute, I do have LNAV and ALT hold. Uh, basically, during the uh, CAT 2, CAT 3 automatic landing, you can start with any mode, so you can have LNAV, VNAV, or heading, VNAV, heading, ALT hold, VS, whatsoever. As far as the approach is armed, it will capture and follow the RLS. So basically, if you set it up correctly, you can have anything here before you capture that. So. Uh, what else I can tell you? So, uh, we are at this point, we do expect an adult in about 5 minutes. Uh, I can tell you what we will expect. I just increase speed a little so we're not just blocking uh, all the areas. And yeah, we can go to center fix as well. There's no reason to go to Abbott anymore. And that's center fix. And top of descent is here. We go with 230. We go 230, and since we've done this one, we briefed for approach. We can do the descent and approach checklist. So, descent checklist precision landing altitude is set to 350. That's checked on the chart. 
anti-ISIS off, approach with fuel is discussed, ISL bugs, check and set, we have EF of 131 on flaps 40 and riding minimums of 50, QNH is 1013 which is set already, so that's uh, nice and done. And we go to the other side, I just saw that my computer has stopped, so hopefully you heard me well. On the other side we have 131, plus 40, minimums of 50, and that's checked and set. Next is approach checklist, so approach checklist we do frequencies, 1105, 1105, 1105 in here, range rings are in runway 22, we have 6 and 12, which is pretty much non-standard for this airline, but uh, for training purposes, I will do it. Wide speed is decreasing in here. Um, should be 230. Why are you not going to speed? Uh, on the stage, speed mode is should be. Okay, I have noticed anyway. So, yeah, now she's following that. Items we have India Sierra Echo Delta. India Sierra Echo Delta. And should be actually in just an X-ray. Let me check. Is it? Yeah, it's the same frequency. But why is it on this side as well? Yeah, now it's correct sensing, and it's 2,500. So I just go 2,500 VS and slowly send to 2,500. Yep, so far so good. So since we are approaching our rings, uh, I will start reducing speed already. I go with flaps 1. I reduce speed to flaps 1 speed. Uh, there's no reason to speed up. And yeah, I want to show you a couple of things on the way down. I do have flaps 1. Flaps 5. I reduce speed to flaps 5. Should be up at 166 for now. And yeah, we're descending. We are cleared for approach, let's say. So, since we are cleared for approach, that's the most important and critical part. Cleared for approach, we hit the approach, we see warlock and glide slope, and this moment you set the second autopilot. That's the first moment in the flight you can switch both autopilots on. 2500. And rain is noted. So we have two autopilots on and for now it's just a single channel, it's just one command. And we're reducing speed, so uh, it's nicely coming down for now. So since then we are flaps 5, we are nicely far away. Uh, it should be captured soon. I can even go a little bit to the right to capture the flies already. Yeah, okay, just keep going this way. And the other thing we can go here down, flaps 15, and we are playing the lights as you, so I switch on the lights. And I do reduce speed to flaps 15 speed. And I do landing check this down to flaps, so approach check is actual. I think it's instrument set cross check, approach eight check and set, landing uh, start switches continues. We go to continues. Uh, next one is recall checked. Speed brake on the light, on the light. Then you go down to green or green, auto brake. Three is set and held in flaps, so follow is captured. Since the follow is captured, we set the runway heading to the tree. And I go to flaps 30 initially to show you something. So flaps 30. Uh, flaps 30 VRF will be 139. So I go 139 plus 5, 144. And lights was live. Yeah, the lights have come down, so once it's captured, you 
will see the pitch moment on clubs 13. And Lysop is almost captured. So Lysop captured, misapproach altitude is quite important to set it here. 3000 from the chart, 3000 from the set. So as you see, the pitch is like about 0 degrees, but if we go to clubs 14, we're going slower, so we have more time, and the pitch will be kind of the same, or even less. So 131 plus 5, 6. And flaps 4, we have almost negative pitch, which is with this weight, super nice. And yeah, to cross weight 55. So we have some positive pitch and we have flaps, 44 green light, landing lights are on and you see we have the single channel flag which means that uh, it is still operating a single channel uh, but soon it will get uh, to do the self test and it's doing self test at 1000 feet keep flashing, then you see the land tree or uh, command, depending on the version. Since then you will see rollout and flare, and that's the most important things. so uh, you have to get stable quite early just to be on the safe side. And do we see anything outside from now? Yeah, we still can see something, but yeah, I think the weather is quite well. I just show a day on the land. So by 500 feet radio, which is in here, you have to have flare on, otherwise 400 will start uh, trimming and it disconnect, uh, and then you have to go around if you don't have flare, but for now it's all well. Uh, at minimums, we continue at 50 feet, it will show flare in here as active, at uh, 35 feet it will just go to retard on this one. And after touchdown, the auto drop will disconnect automatically, and once the nose gear goes down, you can disconnect the auto drop well and do it manually. But if it has rollout mode, uh, it will roll out itself. So 500 feet radio of the round, and the other one will not check the altimeter as well. So I will stay mostly on the instruments and just to show you how it's going. We are 200 feet, that's normally cat 1 minimums, and we're still going down. I get Approaching ready as well, minimums. so in any case, we just go around. Approaching minimums, we would normally have contact, and 50. 50. It goes minimums. to third. 30. Point 10. Retard. And touchdown. Speed breaks up. Knots and we are stopped. That's it. Thank you very much. And the one other thing is that if you're doing the auto lens or auto couple approach, and you do have two autopilots coupled, and then if you press toga at any time, it will not disconnect the autopilots, but it will go with the fully automatic warrant. So that's quite a nice feature as well. 